be as the chaste roe or deer, and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people, and flee every one into his own land. Every one that is found shall be thrust through, and every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. And then we'll drop to the, go to the 14th chapter of Isaiah. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the stranger shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from thy hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. Now, if you will, on the back page, let's read that portion of Peter, Second Peter here, and then we'll get on with the message. Peter says, But the day of the Lord, will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, where the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Well, where we're at, not home. <laughs> we're just a passing through. We've got a better place. Let's don't forget we're temporarily here, but we're citizens of heaven once we know Christ. Our citizenship is beyond this place. But this commonly, I call it the great day that's coming, and it is. But it's called many times, as we read there a moment ago, the, the day of the Lord. The day wherein the Lord shows that he is the Lord. But now he's waiting to that time he's seated by the Father. Waiting for the time the Father says, son, it's time to wind this thing up. But he's seated by the right hand of the throne of God as we speak. But it's a day that he's going to come and execute judgment on this old earth. Folk, a storm is coming. God is a God of justice. We like the mercy part, don't we? That's what we all need. <laughs> and that's what he shows us through his grace. But he is a God of justice. When he said, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. He meant what he said. We see the evil and the wickedness that goes on today. I believe yesterday's paper reported the night before there have been nine people shot in Houston one night. Three or four of those had died, but nine shot in one night. And that's just here. But 
But we live in a day where judgment, we might say, is overdue, but it will get here. But many shall doubt this day. The Bible says they come in the last day scoffers, walking after their own lust, debunking the idea of God's judgment. But this generation today, as the scripture identified them, are willingly ignorant. They choose to be that way. They don't want to know what God says. Therefore, they just say, I don't believe that God stuff. Just leave me alone. In that case, it's better to leave them alone. Because one of these days, and sad to say, it'll be too late. But it says that those people that were scoffers would be walking after their own lust. They willingly are ignorant. They choose that. But it's going to be a day of wrath. Isaiah 13 verse 9 tells us that. It's going to be a day of wrath. The Lord shall punish the world for the evil that is. He's going to punish the wicked for their iniquity. And folk, that's spelled out. In the last times, it's called the time of Jacob's troubles. And the Lord said, and you've heard me say this before many, many times, that that day, during that time, there's going to be trouble such as the world has never known. No, we'll know thereafter. It's a tough time the world's going to go through. We think things are bad now, but just give us a while. But in Revelations, if you will, on the back of your page again, Revelation 6, verse 14. The heaven departed as a scroll when it's rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their place. Place is plural. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bun man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of them that sitteth on the throne, of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. And if we won't take time to read it, but the scripture says that during that time that men will seek death and will not find it for a five-month period. There's some can't even commit suicide to get away from him. But folk, it's going to be rough. Nothing hid from the Lord. And we ask the question, why? Because of man, man's sin. You recall when Jesus stood before Pilate, On the day when they judged our Lord and Savior, Pilate asked, what's this man done wrong? And they brought a charge and Pilate said, I find no fault in this man. And he washed his hands and said to those folks, the Jews, the Pharisees, and Sadducees. He 
Y'all do what you will. But I find no fault in this man. Do you remember what the Jews said? Let his blood be upon us and our children. They said, let the blood of Christ. Folks, okay, it would be great if the blood of Christ would have been applied in the right direction, wouldn't it? Been applied to their sins. But they said, let his blood be upon us. So, folk, there's a reason for Judgment Day. They crucified the Son of God. Well, Joel tells us, in Joel, the third chapter, it's not on your paper there, but I'm going to read the first two verses. Of Joel chapter 3. For behold in those days. And in that time. When I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. I will also gather all nations. And will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Or Armageddon. Or Megiddo. And will plead with them for my people. And for my heritage Israel whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. God said he's going to gather them back. I believe that part of the main reason for the time of Jacob's trouble is to make them turn to God. And I believe this is what this is telling us at that time that they will turn to God. But right now, don't feel sorry for those Jews because they are rejectors of Christ. But all that reject his son shall be cast forth during this time. And I'm going to read to you. It's not on your uh, scriptures there, but in Matthew chapter 25, verse 30. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. And there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of the, his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations. And he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goat. And he's going to judge them accordingly to what they've done with Christ. Hope that day's coming. And it indeed is going to be a great day. But also in Matthew 25, I want to read to you verse 41. You all know what it says. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Well, God didn't prepare hell for man. He prepared it for the devil and his angels. Man chooses to go there because God paid the price for our sins. It's up to us to either accept or reject that price. But it's going to be a glorious day for some. The graves are going to be open. Isn't that great? That's why it's going to be a great day of the Lord. He shall come back to be victorious and set up his kingdom. If you will, look down to, on your page again, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 4 and 9. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east 
and toward the west. That shall be a great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth in that day. Shall there be one Lord and his name one. What a great day that's going to be. But it says from the west or the east that we read a moment ago uh, toward the east and toward the west. I had a close friend of mine, he used to go with me door knocking, we soul winning or visitation. He was real faithful about going with me for years. He's gone on to be with the Lord now. But he actually did this. He and I were close after his wife died. Spent a lot of time with him, fishing and so forth. Good fellowship with a good Christian brother. But when his wife died, he buried her, and then he got to thinking, the Lord's coming from the east. He had the funeral home, cemetery, to take his wife's body and bury it where she'd be facing the east. I said, but George, you don't need to do that. But he did anyway. He said, I won't feel comfortable until I do it. But folks, the Lord's coming. And if he wants to come from the east, that's great, isn't it? Amen. It won't matter what position our body's in. What matters is position our soul is in. Amen. All right. And if you would, look down further at Isaiah chapter 33, verse 17, one of my favorite scriptures. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. And we're going to see him as the king of kings and the lord of lords. And if you would look at the last scripture, Revelation 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such a second death hath no power. What are we going to be doing in the millennial reign? This right here tells us. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ. And they shall reign with him a thousand years. Oh, a thousand years is a long time. But the Lord is going to have his kingdom set up on this earth as he's promised. He's going to sit in that Jerusalem from the throne of David and he's going to rule and reign. And we get to serve him. He's going to be the king of kings and the lord of lords. Now, the question really is, when all this takes place, what will be your lot, our lot? Well, it's all in our Lord and Savior. He's done it all. As a song we sing so often, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Amen. Sin had left the crimson stain, and he makes me as white as snow. Both because of his blood, his love for us, our sins are paid for. He doesn't require double payment. One time's enough. 
I wouldn't ask our Lord to go back and be crucified again, would you? One time was enough. It's not the blood of Jesus plus what we do. It's what it's the blood of Jesus, period, that covers our sin. Every man has that privilege and every man has that right to accept the blood of Christ. Folk, if you don't, not because I didn't tell you. I'll tell you today. Include the Lord in your life, the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's going to count for the great day that is coming. Folk, I could go on and on about what's going to be. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> but all these things we see wrong, the scripture says it's going to be made right. God's going to judge it. And the best part about it, it won't be a bad judgment or a wrong judgment. To be accurate. All right.